Hi and welcome back to our channel. My name is Jörg, which is German for George, here at Fajik in Berlin. Technical rounds people are the biggest enemy, like the boss in your favorite video game. And they can really suck, I understand that. Anyway, there is this funny picture here that I'm also going to talk about in a little bit, which we like to use in our coaching program. Because from experience, I know that everybody gets stuck in the tech rounds one way or another, and that's okay as long as you learn from your mistakes. So here is how you best prepare for your next coding round with a German company. Technical assessments are the cornerstone of every hiring process for IT jobs here in Germany. And be aware that they come in different shades, different sizes, different portions. In principle, tech skills assessments are the medium part of the sandwich. So they come in the second and the third round. Uh, and the fourth round will be then the final round, which we call culture fit call. Anyway, most technical assignments will be done at home first. Again, that's the second round. And then you proceed to the third round where you kind of defend your solution in more of a technical discussion. Yes, some companies also start out with the tech round before they will schedule any call with you at all. But in most cases, really, the way it happens is just like I described. It's how it goes in the second and the third round. That's the techy parts. Again, I've also seen German companies hire people after one long technical discussion, which went on for two to three hours. So there wasn't any coding assignment at all. But that's really rather the exception. I'll be focusing on coding assignments in this video today. So the second round, which some of you may also know or refer to as take home challenge, coding test, something like that. Again, it all really depends on the role, the company, and of course, the specific skill set that's in question. But in 80, 90%, you'll be given such a coding assignment first, where you will then be asked to hand that in within seven days or so. One thing to remember here is that you should definitely put a note in your calendar that you ask for feedback another seven days after the official deadline, unless, of course, they gave you an exact date until when they would get back to you just so that you don't forget to ask. And then that is, of course, the date that you want to put in your calendar. For applicants coding assignments, there are, of course, assessment tools which have become kind of essential for evaluating candidates' coding skills, coding logic, problem-solving abilities, these things. And the top three tools to know for you here and check them out are, I'm sure you already know them, Hackerang, Coder by Codility. All right, these three are the most common ones here. Be aware that each tool, of course, has its own features. Hackerang, for example, has custom coding tests, which is good just to get a good understanding for us. Codabyte focuses on machine learning algorithms. Also, Codility is also very much into compliance features. Other platforms that you may know are, of course, Lead Code, Code Force. And what matters here is that you really focus on a variety of difficulty levels and different problems, problem domains. So arrays, strings, trees, graphs, coding tests, they really, again, come in all sizes and shapes. What is super important here is that you stick to the instructions, of course, that you're given. The tools and technologies that you should apply usually also follow from the job description. And if you're not clear about it, about the assignment or the instructions, it's perfectly fine for you to get back to HR asking for clarification. Don't just hand in a coding solution using vanilla JavaScript when in fact you should have coded using React as a framework, but that's just a side note. Now comes my main piece of advice for all of you preparing for coding assignments or doing coding assignments right now. There is this funny photo that you see here that's kind of an insider joke among techies and tech recruiters. And it nicely describes that what you're supposed to show in terms of skills in the tech rounds may really have nothing to do with the actual job. And there is some truth to it. Many companies will make such a big fuss and people are wondering why. I've heard of assignments that take more than 10 to 12 hours to complete. And well, the thing is really that as long as the companies dictate the terms here, there's really nothing one can do about it. But it's your choice, of course, to do such a lengthy uh, tech assessment in the first place. You don't have to if you don't want to. That's also a statement, right? But you're going to find it interesting that there is a basic principle lying underneath it all. Doing coding challenges really is like going back to school. It's going to be all about data structures and algorithms. Again, sorting, searching, dynamic programming. You will have to do unit testing, of course, and your code will have to be spotless. And if you take a look at our success stories, actually, 
you'll see that really everybody who came here through our program says so. What does this all mean for you? Well, it essentially means that you have to go back to practicing doing coding challenges as such. Simply because there is a certain way in which coding challenges are designed and therefore also supposed to be solved and they follow their own logic and you have to get behind that logic. Let me tell you why I can totally relate to this. I have a degree in law and you're in Germany, the way that they assess your skills for young lawyers is also just about the system behind solving a legal case. In other words, they grade you for doing it in a certain style. And it's the same for techies. Your solution needs to be structured and set up in a logical way based on the assignment. And it cannot be sloppy, of course. Whether or not it has anything to do with the product or the service of the company you're interviewing with doesn't matter because, again, it's all based on their default design. I'm talking about the assignment. I know, I know, whether or not you're going to ace a challenge says nothing about whether you're a good software engineer or not. Bad news is most companies will still stick to coding assignments because it helps them filter the supposedly good ones from the supposedly bad ones. Good news again here is you can totally learn it. Again, it's kind of like going back to university. And for that, you have to do them regularly and intensively. Finally, I want you to become aware that even though you may think your solution was great, it may not have nailed it 100%. Why is this important? Because competition is tough. Please remember, you're essentially competing with the rest of the world. And this is where sometimes really 90% doesn't cut it. In our coaching program, we see this very often, that people believe their solution should have been rewarded with an invite to the next round. And I can guarantee you that any rejection that follows that will really hit you on the head. It, it really hurts and it sucks. What matters in situation really is that you go back to them, ask for concrete feedback on where the tech team believes that you should have designed a better solution. Some companies will respond to you because they don't care, but then you just skip them and turn to the next. Mm, but those who will respond to you are going to really help you with what it comes down to, and that's a learning curve. And I hope you found this video useful. If so, feel free to subscribe. And if you're interested in joining our personal coaching program, go ahead and watch our video training for which you'll find the link underneath this video. We're already looking forward to get to know you. All the best and see you soon.